Hey, this video, you know, I uh, got to see my grandbabies day, went to Waffle House, got some eggs, then later we went to, got a steak sandwich, you know, and I'm sharing all that, sharing being time with the grandbabies. But at the end of the video, after I show what I pay for gas, I get in a rent, um, a rent, so I guess, so to speak. So this video is kind of long, but it's, you know, after the gas thing about, 11 minutes i think or whenever you see the gas pump and i wanted to share because it was kind of weird situation at the gas pump but then i go on a rant talking about my wife's condition and uh just everything so you know if you want to hear that stick around if not right there where the gas pumps are then it starts that so i i wanted to warn everybody so they'd be like what in the world is this because you know sometime my my ADHD or my mind will start rambling and I'll get to talking and they'll be like, what in the world? So, uh, you know, thank y'all for watching and enjoy the video. And once you get the gas pumps, that's where I kind of talk about the danger of gas pumps and keep rambling and talk about my wife and all kind of stuff. So if you don't want to hear that, the gas pumps. But if you want to hear all that, enjoy. And don't forget to subscribe. Thank y'all for watching. Today was Thursday. January the 19th. <laughs> I wanted to share, you know, some of the food we ate. And of course, we had to go see the grandbabies and get something to eat. Ooh, eggs and gravy and toast, and coffee and tea. And water. You got to do it with eggs and butter. As soon as I pull up to see my grandson, my oldest grandson, he wants to drive the car. Yeah, go that way so we can circle around so we don't run over your cars. Parker, go this way. <laughs> Parker, go this way. What? You got anything in front of you? Anything in front of the car? We don't want to run over it. Hey! Parker driving the car, but he he's looking around. He... What? Turn off. Turn off. Turn off. <laughs> okay, we go park now. We go park and get out. Oh. Yep. Hey, you mess with that stuff. Okay. Yeah, this is my youngest grandson, and he's wrapped up like a bear in a rug. <laughs> he's so cute. He's just looking at there like, all right, what's going on? I'm looking at you. What are you doing? Hey. Hey, Papa. Hey, Lady. Hey, Papa. Hey. <laughs> he's probably getting hungry now. Boo, 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 boo. Boop, 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 boop. I'd be a terrible photographer. I can't get the kids to smile at all. Boop, 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 boop. <laughs> I was entertaining the grandbaby while my daughter was in there fixing their supper and fixing the plate so I could share the video on the food thing. Yeah, he just a swaying. Sweet you, old daddy. Look at that. My daughter, man, she is the excellent chef. She made this barbecue chicken with some rice and broccoli and look at the cabbage this is a meal that'll make put the muscles on your bones out here having the derby yeah. 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 look at that beautiful sunset beautiful sunset above the peach trees we well, gotta have one of these in a while Ribeye steak sandwich. Rawr. She got the ribeye steak sandwich with a loaded baked potato. This is a raspberry vinaigrette salad dressing on top of the salad. So my wife really loves that flavor. There you go. Salad, tea, coffee. Oh, it's so cool. We ain't got to have one of these in a while. Ribeye steak sandwich. Rawr. She got the ribeye steak sandwich with a loaded baked potato. Paid a little bit more for this gas, but it was in a safer location. So you got to be careful out there. Yeah, be careful out there. You know, I don't know. This is just my opinion. So not trying to get anybody to think crazy, but... People have always been kind of mean anyway, because, you know, I grew up in the 70s, and I remember 
going to the bathroom in a the movie theater when I was little, and this guy was a little bit older, and some kid that I uh, had trouble with in school, his older brother, beat me up in the bathroom. <laughs> so, so people always been mean, and you know, the different cultures would just go in there and butcher everybody. So, I mean, people, humans, you know, as long as there's about, there's more than one, it's always been mean. But it seemed like, for a while, people were nicer. So I don't know if it's just a region or their economic level or what's going on. But, you know, now, it seems like within the past few years and, you know, all this stuff, people are getting a lot meaner. So you got to really watch yourself. People are doing things that create a lot of money fast, but they can go to jail for a long time. So it's risky. And uh, I was sharing the gas pump, you know, and um, so I paid $6 for $3 something a gallon, which is still uh, cheaper than a lot of other places in the country. But the thing is, there were three gas stations. One was like three twenty nine, one was three sixteen, and the other one was like three oh eight. So I went to the three oh eight one. I pull in off the road, so I I take a left, pull in the gas station. I said, Well, when I come out, I want to come back to this road. So I go around the gas station, and a car pulls up like one of those es escalator, you know, like um, SUV type, the nice one. They pulled in front of me in between the first and second gas station. There's only four gas pumps on one side, but it's one thing. So you can get gas on this side or the other side, and there's two of them. And there's two on the other side. So I had eight pumps total, a little bit of gas station. And the guy just pulls up in between the, the pump right by the door, and he's not even getting gas. And I was behind him because I wanted to face the road. So I back up. He sits there for a few seconds, and I said, well, he ain't going to move. So I back up and go to the pump, and the guy's just looking at me out of his car like this. And I said, okay, he's either having a bad day, got some mental issues, or he's just one of them cold people inside. So I said, well, shoot, I ain't going to get gas here and risk dealing with some obnoxious, you know, person or dangerous person or you never know. He wasn't getting gas. He wasn't getting out. So what's he doing? So it was a dot 308, but it's worth paying that extra 21 cent to go down the road towards more people, more lit, and you don't have to worry about it. So you got to watch your six. You know, now it's just getting to, uh, it's sad, but it's getting dangerous. You got to watch where you are, even out here in the country. You know, the big cities, I know it's, it's always been this uh, since I've always started driving, you know, but you, I don't know if there's more people, so people are getting caught doing all these things, but people, people just don't care, man. So you gotta, you gotta really be careful. And I don't know if it's that way all over the world, but it's, you know, you open your eyes and it's just like people just, they're going nuts that nobody cares. I mean, you could fall down and somebody just come step on you just because they can. I mean, it's almost like people don't have a soul anymore. You know, it's, uh, so just be careful, be careful when you're out riding around <laughs> because you never, you never know. It could go anyway. So, you know, just kind of stay with yourself and just to me, just keep God close and pray. And I believe the Holy spirit will protect me, you know, I want to make sure I bring the videos and get to be there for my grandkids and and I don't need no foolishness. <laughs> but I just wanted to kind of warn everybody, you know, hey, uh, watch your surroundings. Watch these crazy people because, you know, you can't trust nobody. Um, unfortunately, it's sad, you know. Um, so you got to be very, very, very careful. Because I just people, I don't know what's going on, but people have lost their mind. You know, but uh, try not to be a sad note, but, you know, thank you for watching. Don't forget to subscribe. And I was at 8, 871 earlier. I don't know what I am now, but I lost that one. But hopefully they'll 
somebody resubscribe and 130 or 129 more and I'll be at a thousand. You know, there's a big long, not that long, and I'm only like that much as far as the uh, watch time on the shorts and all. So my son, this is kind of funny. I said, well, you know, because I was working full time and I got to where my back and my legs and I was having pain and having a hard time standing there. And younger people saying, oh, this is the easiest job I've done my whole life. And I'm like, you know, <laughs> I'm like, wow. So I've been out of work since November the 10th, you know, and uh, doing nothing, sitting home, binge watching all these TV shows. So it gives me more content. And then we've been eating. And my son tells me, I said, well, son, it'd be great. One day, you know, had the YouTube dream and um, I said, it'd be great to make like 2000 a month, you know, off my watch time and all. And he says, daddy, by the time that happens, the rapture is going to happen. <laughs> so he's probably right. He said, you're not willing to do what you got to do. But a lot of the stuff that's common now, uh, as you heard, YouTube's trying to shut a lot of that down. So people, if they cuss a lot, they're trying to shut those videos down. If they talk about guns or show guns or even video games showing guns, they're demonetizing stuff now because it's not, um, what do you call it, advertiser friendly. So a lot of things is getting where, you know, um, people are so influential over seeing all this stuff. And I don't think social media might have had an impact on certain things, but I don't know if it's that or our culture or, you know, taking things out of school. And then you even see videos where the kids say they get a call from the teacher telling them to, Hey, I need help with your, your uh, children. And they say, well, I do my part at home. It's your part to do their part when you're at school. So nobody's wanting to take responsibility for anything, <laughs> you know, or, um, you know, some, the kids are just going crazy. I don't know what it is, but just be careful. But thank y'all for watching. Even if I never don't make any money, I enjoy doing it. It's it's easier than playing golf. I appreciate y'all watching me and my craziness. And I and I don't want to trim my beard it at night because you know it. This creates a lot of hair when I trim it. It's probably it's like that long. And you like go about half inch, real long. But I need to trim it, you know. But we got to go on a cruise. Me and my wife want to go on a cruise, and we want a balcony. So the balconies are starting to fill up, and a lot of them don't have it anymore. But I won't be able to go on a cruise till May. So if I get a full time job, you know, how am I going to do that? I could go back because I'm not really. I don't think they fired me yet. I'm not quite sure. But um, I still had access to the app earlier, but I couldn't access it a little while ago, so I don't know if I'm still employed. But I put in for FMLA and short-term disability, and I got to go February. I got to go get a neurological test to see if I got neuropathy or something's going on with my nervous system. But once you get all this stuff going, you never you, you never know what's happening. Uh, the doctors can only kind of, if there's a definite thing, this ain't medical advice, they can help you. But if you have something that's not definite, it's kind of crazy. But also, if anybody knows my wife, my wife has her, like, this is your heart. In here, about middle ways, the way I understand it, it's called like a mitral valve. So they done told her that they can only do so much to help her out. You know, um, they've done everything they can do medicine-wise. And this ain't medical advice. You know, YouTube would take you down if you talk about medical <clears throat> and don't say that. So, November of last year, 2021, well, a year before last, she flatlined twice. So, if they go in there and do anything, she has to be awake. But to go in your heart, they can't do it. And I think there's an echo machine, but they only have like a... I don't know what the statistics is, but my, my sister was just on one. And I think my mom and them, she just got out 
uh, physical therapy hospital Tuesday. So she was in there a while. But I believe your survival rate is only 40% of the people that get on this uh, echo machine. And that's after you get on the respirator. And then you only be on a respirator so long, and then they'll give you a tracheotomy. And that's what they said. And they can put you on something that oxygenates your blood, so this thing can keep you living. But that would probably be the only way they could do the heart surgery on my wife, but then she might not recover enough to get off that. And if you're so high risk, they're not going to, They'll even though you could live on that, but it's $20,000 a day. So they're not going to let you live but so long. And I still have insurance right now, but if I lose it, then a lot of your insurance doesn't cover you through the whole U.S., I don't think. I don't know. I need to find out. But she's been going to Charleston, South Carolina, and they've done all they can do for her. And uh, about a month or two ago, November, somewhere around there, she had a uh, stent they had to blow up. But she got to where her blood pressure was high and her blood wasn't flowing. So they blew it up. So there's nothing they can do for her. And since her heart's not pumping like it needs to, her veins are shutting down. So it's just a matter of time. I finally explained this to my son the other day. And uh, my daughter kind of knows it. But then she wants her to always watch the baby and say, hey, can you do this? Can do that? Because my wife looks like she's still good. But... <laughs> she's pushing herself to do this. So they really, they really pushing my wife a lot to get her to do all this stuff. And, you know, I try to say no, cause my wife, she's having to take an inhaler and she's on a CPAC at night. She don't know oxygen yet, but anything could get her upset. Cause when I first started mother, this job that I might have, I got mad. Me and her mother was talking and, we were arguing, but it was over the phone. And, her, you know, they didn't want to stay in a, a hotel of my choosing. They wanted to stay in a nice hotel and kind of live at large. And I was wanting to be reasonable because I was having to pay for it. And um, they got so upset and said, well, if we ever get robbed or something happens, I'll never forgive you. And it was like a hundred and, hundred and something dollars with a discount from the hospital if you're a patient. So they stayed there and everything was okay, but they gave me a hard time about it. But her mother was on the phone. I was here and we were both in my wife's ear and she got so tore up, she had a stroke. And this was before, um, two months later when she flatlined in the hospital. So they can't really put her under when she has to have a heart calf. Now she has to be awake. So, you know, just, Keep her in your prayers. I pray for her every day. I believe that's the only reason she's still alive is because we continue to pray for her. But I've looked at uh, some of the, you know, Charleston, MUSC, is supposed to be the best hospital in South Carolina. But Boston, Massachusetts, New York, is supposed to have some of the best heart surgeons in the country. So i really like her to go and be able to be seen by these, but, you know, getting the gas, get up there, whether our insurance will cover it. She's on, she has Medicaid, but I think Medicaid's only good in South Carolina because a lot of times in the past, they wouldn't take it in, uh, South Carolina Medicaid wouldn't take it in Georgia. But, you know, if I win the lottery or something, we could try, but it might be to the point that, you know, there's nothing they can do. So it's just a matter of time. She might have... She could have the day, a year, 10 years, but she has a lot of times where she doesn't have any energy at all. So in a way, it's kind of a blessing to uh, be laid off. Well, out of work right now, I'll be able to be with her, even though I can't sleep. So I'm up all night watching TV and she has to have her TV time, but we get more relaxed time. And it's like, uh, instead of hustle and bustle, you know, go to work, do this, do that. It's like uh, I'm in a third world country as far as my time demands. There's no rush. <laughs> but, you know, just worry about her. I worry about my little wife. And uh, sometimes it's even hard for me to have that concept of how serious she is. And I got to get myself better. 
because I was doing pretty good and being in this uh, time warp and not doing anything, it's kind of, I'm getting old just sitting here doing nothing. So I got to get out here and if I do YouTube, it gives me an idea to do things and not trying to be too personal, but just kind of, you know, if anybody had any ideas of what they could do or uh, anybody experienced this where a doctor would see you out of state if they uh, did anything, but anytime she would want to do anything, a lot of times they would bring her all the way to Charleston from here. It's a hundred and something miles. So it costs like $200, including food and a hotel. And she'd only be in there 15 minutes. And they'd say, well, we got lab results. Here they are. Why in the world? So we told her if they don't need to really do anything, let tell us on the phone. There's no reason for us to come to office just for that. So they don't have any concept of how people are struggling to <laughs> do anything. So we've had a couple of doctor appointments we didn't have to go to because all they're going to do is give her results or give you the results of the test. So that was pointless to spend $200 to get a result when you get it over the phone. So it's, it's frustrating, man. You know, if take care of yourself, be healthy, do what you got to do. Because once you get to where you got to depend on other people to keep you healthy, it ain't good. <laughs> it ain't good at all. Plus her daddy, her daddy had Agent Orange exposure. This ain't conspiracy theory or anything, but, you know, he did that. And all the siblings ended up having issues. So, you know, that could be, could be relatable to some of those altered DNA might have affected her because she has a lot of health problems. But I believe she's here for a reason. And not to be too long or content, and I'm going to put a warning at the beginning of this video saying, hey, I'm talking about food, grandbabies, but then I go in a rant about my wife's health. So you might not want to watch this if that's a trigger warning, but uh, I just wanted to kind of share. And, and I get to where I can't talk and the kids forget or the grandbabies. One day, you know, they love grandma. What happened to grandma? What happened? And then they can watch this video and say, oh, well, I didn't realize grandma had all of issues, you know, but you know, she loves everybody. She loves all the, all the family. And, you know, I love everybody and all the family. And so, you know, just want to share. And that, that's another reason I'm doing YouTube, whether, <laughs> whether or not I make any money or not. My son told you ain't going to make any money. The rapture happened first, <laughs> but it might help somebody, you know, there's a, uh, I've seen there's over 50 countries that some of my videos are showing up in. So it's more than that. And I, I don't know how many countries in the world, but it's got to be a bunch. So if some of the things I'm going through or an idea might spark somebody, might create a TV show, might say, hey, okay, we can do things. And, you know, if you're ever feeling depressed or or not happy about things, just no matter what you're going to do, life is always going to be tough. So just just get up and fight. You know, that, even though Andrew Tate, some of his stuff he says is kind of crazy, but a lot of things, you know, he said, hey, just go work out, you know, get it done. And even he don't even like to work out. He does it so he can get rid of it and then enjoy his day. But it keeps him in shape. You know, you train, you train your body, train your mind. And if you do all that, then you're stronger to a face of adversity you know, and all these troubles that we had to deal with. And you just had to find your source of strength, you know, minds through God and Jesus. And, um, a lot of people don't have that, you know, some people have other things, you know, but whatever your strength is, you have to have a good base of support, whether it's you're by yourself and whatever you believe in or your family and, and um, you have to have a good support network or you can really get in a dark place and get overwhelmed. And, um, you know, so just reach out, talk to somebody if you need that. But uh, thank you all for listening to my rambling. Hopefully I won't lose 100 subscribers by talking about everything. They'll be like, I didn't sign up for this. But uh, if you're still here sticking around, thank you. And love all you guys. And thank you all for following my channel. I like... 
you know, I get one little subscriber. I'm like, woohoo. <laughs> so I'm, I'm so happy. So I've been doing this about three years now. And, you know, the food is what's really bringing it on. And I got some other ideas, but I'm not sure how to exactly present them, you know, or you got one thing that you're doing and it's going good. You don't want to make another wave come this way and wipe all of it out. So then you're like, well, uh, I wasn't expecting them to do good. Now what I do. So, you know, I love all you guys. Thank y'all for watching. Hope y'all doing well. And uh, don't forget to get some good food, enjoy life. And don't forget to subscribe. And we'll talk at you later.